This case sends a chill down the spine, unveiling the deceit at its heart. It's unthinkable that a son could so cruelly harm his own mother and then report her missing to the police. Both law enforcement and public opinion were mocked by this farce. On June 8, 2012, the Vancouver Police Department was alerted to a missing person report which seemed almost incredible. A 20-year-old Chinese international student reported that his mother had mysteriously disappeared as they were about to drive to the airport for a flight home. Upon a rival, the police found nothing suspicious at the scene. The caller, Yuan Shi Tang, had been studying in Canada for six years. His parents had visited him in Vancouver two weeks prior, and just as they were set to return to the airport, his mother vanished without a trace. Yuan Shi Tang told the police he thought his mother had gone to buy some snacks for the flight, so he and his father searched malls and convenience stores to no avail. As the departure time loomed, they decided to contact the police, both father and son deeply worried. The police then went to the airport to search, hypothesizing that perhaps she had boarded the flight ahead of them. By the end of the day, the airport had announced her details over the loudspeaker, but to no avail. Yuan Shi Tang's father was left stranded in Vancouver, torn between searching for his wife or returning home to China. Meanwhile, the son remained eerily calm, urging his father to return to China first and reassuring him that he would coordinate with the police to find his mother. After the father returned to Foshan, China, he went straight to the local authorities and contacted the Chinese consulate in Vancouver for assistance with the mysterious disappearance of his wife. While Yuan Shi Tang's father was frantic to find his wife, Canadian police grew suspicious that she might have illegally immigrated. The son was a student in Canada and his parents had come to visit, but the mother disappeared just as they were about to return to China. Furthermore, the son's statements were incredibly suspicious. Two weeks later, Yuan Shi Tang's father returned from China to Canada. The police now realized their initial suspicions might not align with reality. If Yuan Shi Tang's mother had wanted to stay in Canada, the family would likely have kept quiet to attract less attention. Additionally, she had vanished without her passport or any personal belongings, including money. A Chinese woman who spoke no English and knew no one locally would have found it nearly impossible to hide in a foreign country. Consequently, the police called in Yuan Shi Tang and his father for further questioning, this time focusing on whether there were any family feuds, debts, or mental health issues involving the mother. After both denied all such possibilities, the case was handed over to the RCMP for further investigation. At this juncture, Yuan Shi Tang's mother had been missing for over 14 days. Father and son, clutching her photograph, scoured every corner, querying strangers they encountered in their desperate search to find any trace of the woman in the picture. They continued tirelessly, even as their voices grew hoarse from asking too many questions, clinging to the hope of finding their loved one in a country that was utterly foreign to her. The police present were moved by the determination of Yuan Shi and his father. Facing the cameras, they declared they would never cease their search for their beloved mother and wife. Thus, the police began to re-examine statements and earlier calls, particularly focusing on the last person to have seen Yuan Shi Tang's mother, her own son. They quickly noted inconsistencies in his account. For instance, in his initial 911 call, he claimed he was going to pick her up from the hotel to go to the airport but later changed his story to picking her up for breakfast. Initially, he stated his mother was alone at the hotel, but later mentioned his father was also staying in the same room. Wen Chi Tang had been in Canada for six years, yet his English remained poor, and he struggled to comprehend the questions posed by the 911 operator. He couldn't even specify his mother's height or build, offering the feeble excuse, I don't understand and I don't know how to explain. 
The police found no reason to continue scrutinizing Yuan Shitang, yet they wondered why did he still struggle with communication after six years in Canada? The investigation then extended to other hotel guests, and a crucial clue was uncovered. The room next to the crime scene was rented by another Chinese national also named Tang. Further inquiries revealed the occupant of the neighboring room was none other than Yuan Shitang. When Yuan Shitang called 911, he told the police that on the morning his mother disappeared, he had traveled from his residence to the hotel to pick her up. However, no one suspected that the dutiful son had a room in the same hotel as his parents, right next door. Calm under police questioning, he explained through an interpreter that his own place was somewhat far from the hotel, so he had booked a room there for convenience. When asked why he hadn't mentioned this before, Yuan Shi Tang's reply was, You didn't ask, so why should I tell? Observing this filial son, one might wonder whether his purpose at the police station was to test their investigative skills or to report his mother's case. Immediately following this, the police searched the room Yuan Shi Tang had rented. They discovered bloodstains on the ceiling, bedside cabinet, and wardrobe. Similar traces had evidently been there for some time. However, at that point, the blood samples and DNA from Yuan Shitang's mother were still being analyzed in China, leaving the police unable to determine whose blood it was. Another investigative team unearthed some crucial information. The apartment Yuan Shitang rented in the city center was not as far as he had claimed. Furthermore, Yuan Shitang was not living alone. His roommate was a young Asian-American woman, and the pair were romantically involved. However, Yuan Shitang refused police entry to his apartment, and, lacking evidence, they were unable to secure a search warrant. On July 29th, marking a month and a half since Yuan Shitang's mother went missing, Human remains were discovered inside a suitcase on a beach near Harwood Island, about 200 kilometers from the location Yuan Shitang reported her missing. The body, heavily decomposed, was identified as that of a middle-legged Asian woman. The clothes on the body led police to immediately suspect they had found Yuan Shitang's mother. An autopsy reports confirmed the remains were indeed hers. The victim had undergone spinal surgery identifiable by the screws in her back. Her skull was fractured, showing multiple large holes. After identifying Yuan Shitang's mother as the victim of a homicide, her son became the prime suspect in the case. The police could have chosen traditional investigative methods such as surveillance, interrogation, and evidence gathering but they opted for a different approach using a sting operation they believed would be more effective in preventing alerting the suspect. The discovery of Yuan Shitang's mother's body was kept confidential by the police. A week later, an undercover officer from Guangdong called the number Yuan Shitang had listed on his missing person poster. She claimed to have information and arranged a meeting at a Starbucks cafe. She told Yuan Shi Tang that while fishing with a friend, she found a suitcase. She was too frightened to touch it, but her friend noted that the person inside wore a blue shirt, similar to the one on Yuan Shi Tang's mother in the poster, and had a similar hairstyle. She informed him that they had not yet contacted the police, but if Yuan Shi Tang paid them a sum of cash, they would help dispose of the suitcase. Upon hearing this, Yuan Shi Tang abruptly stood up and left. The officer followed him and challenged, Be honest with yourself. Your mother was tortured, and if you were not involved, you would have called the police here and now. Think carefully about my offer. She then gave Yuan Shi Tang her phone number, advising him not to take too long to decide as she would hand over the suitcase to the police otherwise. That evening, after much deliberation, Yuan Shi Tang called her, stating he didn't have enough money but would try to gather the amount requested. He suggested she could call his father, claiming his mother had been kidnapped, and his father would pay the ransom. 
Subsequently, the woman, an undercover officer, took Yuan Shi Tang to meet her boss, a man from Hong Kong who claimed to be a member of the Triad Society, but was also undercover. The boss told Yuan Shi Tang that they could help dispose of the suitcase, but needed more details about his actions to erase all traces. Initially, Yuan Shi Tang was suspicious of the boss. However, when he described the suitcase in detail, it sees cola and design, Yuan Shi Tang became completely convinced. In a subsequent meeting, Yuan Shi Tang confessed to killing his biological mother. He recounted that she died the night before he reported her missing. He had summoned her to his rented hotel room under the guise of needing help with cleaning. While she was picking up coins off the bed, Yuan Shi Tang struck her several times on the head with a hammer. He then smothered her with a pillow for over 20 minutes. After confirming she was dead, Yuan Shi Tang stuffed her body into a large suitcase, took it back to the apartment he shared with his girlfriend, and the next day he returned to the hotel where his parents were staying and informed his father that his mother had disappeared. Once his father returned to China, Yuan Shi Tang drove to the Fraser River Bridge to dispose of the suitcase, then returned to the scene to clean up the blood and burn the pillow and murder weapon before dumping them into the river. Yuan Shi Tang recounted the entire story to the undercover police. He even proposed a condition after disposing of the suitcase. Could they also eliminate his father? Once he's gone, all his money will be mine. Name your price, and I will meet it. The undercover operatives realized they were dealing with a dangerously low IQ criminal. To maintain their cover, the boss replied, We know someone dying from cancer who could take the fall for you if you pay enough. His brain is damaged from chemotherapy. Can you help us figure out how to take care of your father? We'll record it for him to practice. Yuan Shi Tang believed them and detailed his entire crime process. Consequently, the RCMP formally arrested Yuan Shi Tang on September 7th. He was charged with first-degree murder and intentional homicide. The police had all the evidence they needed, including audio and video recordings made by the undercover operatives, along with hairs and bloodstains of Yuan Shi Tang's mother found in his car. CCTV footage showed Yuan Shi Tang returning to his apartment with the suitcase and dragging it out the next day. The size and color of the suitcase matched the one found by the police. A small amount of DNA found in his apartment was also a match for Yuan Shi Tang's mother. We think this case should be closed now, right? Yuan Shi Tang appeared to be a dutiful son, so why would he do this? And surely he must be punished by the law for his crimes. However, there was a complication in prosecuting the case. Yuan Shi Tang's father, possessing a bizarre line of thinking, his wife was no longer alive, so he could not bear to lose his son as well, chose to overlook all of Yuan Shi Tang's crimes and began filing complaints in court to protect his son. However, he was unaware of Yuan Shi Tang's intentions to also eliminate his father as discussed with the undercover police. In Canada, the media does not possess extensive freedoms to report on particularly serious criminal cases. Police spokespeople consistently declined to comment before trials. However, the press and journalists have managed to unearth some information. Yuan Shi Tang's family ran a wooden furniture business in Foshan, China. After high school, the son was sent abroad with hopes that he would establish a foundation for the family business overseas. Yet Yuan Shi Tang failed to apply himself academically, not managing to secure a university place despite years in language and preparatory classes. Rarely attending class, he became a gambling addict, frequenting casinos to squander money when he ran out, and working in restaurants to fund his gambling habit. Yuan Shi Tang described his parents as extremely controlling. They used financial leverage to enforce obedience, requiring him to call them every three days, with each call lasting at least 20 minutes. Failure to comply meant a deduction from his monthly living allowance. 
Additionally, Yuan Shi Tang was not allowed to have a girlfriend, and every penny of his discretionary spending was monitored. He had no money to spend on a partner. Overwhelmed by his parents' control, Yuan Shi Tang devised ways to steal from them using money meant for tuition, rent, immigration fees, and a car his parents had provided for himself and his girlfriend. Although he had lived in Canada for six years and told his parents he had permanent residency, he was found to only have a tourist visa upon his arrest. Furthermore, another truth was revealed. Yuan Shi Tang's father was unfaithful. Their marriage was in name only. Yuan Shi Tang's father told the press that his wife was incredibly controlling about his hairstyle, who he dined with, and how much money he had in his pocket. Eventually, he stopped returning home and sought companionship elsewhere. After discovering her husband's infidelity, Yuan Shi Tang's mother placed all her trust and hopes in her only son. She came to Vancouver upon hearing that her son had a girlfriend, with plans to take Yuan Shi Tang back to China, where she had arranged a prospective wife for him in Foshan. The father's admissions explained many of the suspicious circumstances surrounding the case, Previously in Vancouver, Yuan Shi Tang had rented a room next to his parents' hotel room to avoid detection. He and his girlfriend moved in together, and his father did not report his wife missing to the police overnight because they were separated. According to Yuan Shi Tang's father, this was a family that appeared flawless externally, but was utterly decayed on the inside, a controlling mother, an unfaithful father, and the conclusion that such overbearing maternal influence had adversely affected their son, Yuan Shi Tang. His father switched lawyers three times, citing emotional distress and a fierce determination to defend his son's innocence. However, he had no say in determining whether his son had a psychological disorder. Evaluation showed that Yuan Shi Tang's mental state was completely normal, and he was fully aware of his actions. To prove Yuan Shi Tang's mental competence, the prosecution introduced another undercover agent into the prison. This agent, also a Cantonese speaker, befriended him to delve into his psyche. Predictably, Yuan Shi Tang fell into the trap set by the police. Yuan Shi Tang confided in the undercover agent that he had no regrets about killing his mother. He felt suffocated by his parents' control and believed that only by eliminating them could he achieve freedom. He had long harbored a desire to end their lives, and finally, his wish had been partly fulfilled. He also told the agent that he had waited for his parents to come to Canada to execute his plan, where there is no death penalty, and, in his view, the police were inept, making it a safer venue for his crime than China, where the consequences would have been far more severe. Due to his father's steadfast determination to defend him, he hired Troy Anderson, a highly renowned lawyer known for defeating the RCMP in court and adept at handling cases involving legal challenges from the police. The trial of Yuan Shi Tang was delayed until September 2025, three years after his mother's death. Before the trial, his father conducted several interviews consistently asserting that his son was a good person and that he had a responsibility to protect him. For the prosecution, dealing with family witnesses and defendants is often challenging, as while they seek justice and appropriate penalties for the perpetrator, the family fights to prove their innocence. During a court recess, a reporter saw Yuan Shi Tang's father pass by the waiting area. Yuan Shi Tang greeted him, and his father responded tenderly, Have you eaten, son? He then gave Yuan Shi a thumbs up, signaling, Well done, son. It is unimaginable why this family harbored such distorted thinking. Seemingly both father and son wanted to escape from the wife and mother. In defending his son, the prosecution conceded, and the charge of premeditated murder was withdrawn. At trial, Yuan Shi Tang was only charged with first-degree murder. 
he testified that his parents were strict disciplinarians. As a child, if caught lying, he would be beaten with a feather duster or a wooden stick. However, this did not deter his lying. Rather, it made him more skilled at deceit. For Yuan Shi Tang, the punitive measures were entirely counterproductive. Before the incident, Yuan Shi Tang's mother discovered a car rental receipt that belonged to her son. She knew he had asked for money to buy a car, but instead he had rented one. She then demanded he show her the apartment he claimed he needed funds to purchase for rental purposes. However, his girlfriend was living there, revealing this would expose everything. He concocted various excuses to delay, but he could not deter his mother. Thus, he began to plan her demise. Was this a spontaneous plan, or had it been long in the making? This was crucial for determining the final sentence. Although both outcomes would likely result in a life sentence, a crime of passion could allow for parole after a minimum of 10 years, whereas a premeditated crime would not permit parole for 25 years. In recordings provided by the prosecution, Yuan Shitang confessed that he had long wanted to end his parents' lives to inherit their assets. He planned to sell their house in China and flee with his girlfriend. Interestingly, he did not intend to spend his life with his girlfriend in Vancouver, but rather he planned to marry an ex-girlfriend from China. They had met in high school and were deeply in love, but Yuan Shi Tang's mother, upon discovering the relationship, forced them to break up. Over the past six years, he secretly met this girlfriend whenever he returned to China. Once, he changed his ticket after his parents dropped him at the airport and returned to China for a month to see her. The night before the incident, his ex-girlfriend contacted him online to inform him that she had aborted their child a few days earlier. He consoled her for a long time and his resentment towards his mother grew. Thus, he packed a hammer in his backpack, hoping for an opportunity to kill her. Yuan Shi Tang's father, who later appeared in court, recounted that his son had described studying in Canada as being like a prison and had agreed to let him return to China. However, his wife opposed this and insisted Yuan Shitang study and settle in Canada and find a Canadian girl to marry to obtain residency. If not, he would have to return to China and marry the girl she had chosen. Finally, Yuan Shi Tang's father broke down and said, I feel incredibly guilty for having sent my son to study alone in Canada. It led him to commit the unforgivable crime of murdering his own mother. As a father, I feel a great responsibility for this case. I believe my wife in heaven will understand my heart. Subsequently, an undercover recording showed that Yuan Shi Tang had actually intended to kill his father as well. However, his father being a robust man, Yuan Shi Tang chose his mother as his first victim. Throughout the trial, Yuan Shi Tang's father frequently left the courtroom unable to continue hearing his son's confessions. But no matter what, he defended Yuan Shi Tang to the end, hoping his son would receive the lightest possible sentence. The judge was shocked by the father's tolerance in the face of his son's horrific crimes. After five days of deliberation on whether Yuan Shi Tang had planned the murder of his mother, the jury failed to reach a conclusion. Two jurors withdrew for personal reasons and were excused by the court. If one more juror had left, the jury would have been declared ineffective and the trial would have had to be paused. Fortunately, there were no further reductions. The next day, they reached a verdict, convicting Yuan Shi Tang of second-degree murder. Out of the remaining ten jurors, seven advocated for a 25-year sentence, two for 15 years and one for 10 years. Ultimately, the judge sentenced Yuan Shi Tang to life without parole for 17 years. Both the prosecution and the defense were satisfied with the verdict. Reporters at the scene noted that Yuan Shi Tang still smiled as he left the courtroom, 
Remember how Yuan Shitang had struggled with communication despite six years in Canada? While in prison, he continued his education and was admitted to a university through his own efforts, marking a tragic end to parental over-control. What are your thoughts on this case? Leave your comments below to join the discussion. And before you go, don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications to stay updated on the latest true crime stories.